What a trailer. Wow. I mean, what a freaking amazing trailer. What's up, Raging Nation? How's it going? This is Alex Yu, and you're watching The Road to TF5. This is just the web series we're talking about Transformers last night. This is episode number 96, and I'm sure by now you have all seen the Transformers last night teaser trailer, or trailer number one, whatever you want to call it. It was amazing. Like, it was literally amazing. It was so good. Oh, man, I watched it so many times. And I'm sure you guys have seen my reaction video. For those that saw my reaction video, thank you very much for tuning in. And now, in this episode, I am going to do my trailer analysis breakdown where I take a look at every shot and I provide you a commentary for what we see. So first of all, the music was very different. Of course, near the middle of the, um, of the, the trailer, you start hearing uh, Steve Jablonski's pounding score. Great sounding score, by the way. Felt very, very dark. Now it starts off with this shot over here, and that looks like the, um, the hilt of a sword. Blood dripping on it, a lot of blood stains around, so that already shows you that this is a very, very uh, a, a gritty type of film to begin with. Next, we have the uh, the battle in the medieval forest, a film at Bourne Woods. I believe that this could be a scene that takes place at the beginning of the film. So another close-up of the battle sequence. It is quite intense. You already see arrows that are impaled on bodies at the bottom of the screen. And now this shot. This was something amazing. That three-headed dragon that was on the banner appears in this shot. And only in this shot. And this is something that appears in the medieval scenes. Now this is pretty amazing because this is such a beautiful scene. It's mesmerizing. First of all, we got these... The is this the Isle of Skye? Is this Scotland? I'm not sure, but it could be. Uh, I don't know what the geography looks like over there, but I know it looks really, really um, mountainous like this. There's a horseman over there that's riding along, and it looks like he doesn't feel quite threatened by this Cybertronian dragon. Now nobody knows who this really could be at the uh, like right now, but there are a number of theories like. Um, uh, uh, maybe he could just be called a Predacon, or uh, that could be Predaking, um, or maybe that could be a Dragon Megatron or something. But uh, there's the three-headed dragon, and this is the dragon that um, that the knights um, either fear or or uh, fight or worship or something. Who knows? But very very beautiful scene. Next, uh, this is part of the medieval battle sequence. Uh, archers using uh, fiery arrows. And of course, we've seen this scene in the IMAX uh, featurette. Speaking of IMAX featurette, or rather IMAX, the, um, the aspect ratio takes up the entire screen. There are a lot of shots that are filmed like this with the IMAX camera, and they, it takes up the entire screen. You'll notice that a lot of close-up of close-up shots of human faces that we'll see later on are filmed uh, with a wider aspect ratio as in like in widescreen. So um, uh, just to let you know, you can tell the difference between obviously the IMAX shot scenes and also the non-IMAX scenes. Now this is really interesting because I thought we saw everything that we got to see for the filming, excuse me, at uh, Blenheim Palace. Um, I thought originally there was not going to be an action sequence. I thought it was just uh, going to be a scene where you see the um, the, the the Nazi flags uh, draped over Blenheim Palace and, and, and Nazi soldiers marching. I, I didn't know there was going to be an actual sequence. Uh, but what we have here is explosions, tip, typical uh, Michael Bay fashion, and cars flipping. Obviously, this scene is not complete. Obviously, we are going to see robots in there. They just haven't been uh, rendered in by ILM. So th what we're seeing here is just the raw scene and that it tells us that there's a sequence that involves explosions in during World War II times. So now we have uh, uh, the movie is filmed in modern times or takes place in modern times. It's filmed in medieval times and it also takes place in World War II times. So 1940s era. So the Transformers have been around for a while and this is, is I believe, is a flashback. It's a, it is a flashback sequence uh, that probably takes place somewhere in the middle of the film. 
Okay, there's an explosion scene, pretty intense because the soldiers are trying to run into the explosion, but it was a bad idea because they end up uh, falling. It's just too intense for them. This looks like a pretty intense sequence. Now, this is a great scene. Um, from what I understand, this is uh, one of the, it's a stadium in Detroit, and look how destroyed it is. I mean, look how like destroyed it is. <laughs> Um, yeah, what happened here? This is, like, pretty intense destruction. An entire section of the stadium is just, like, missing. So, I don't know what took place here. The only time I ever knew of any stadium destruction was when Jazz landed. But I think this could be a different stadium, considering the fact that there's a part of a, um, of one of the, uh, the, uh, you know, the, those drone ships, Decepticon drone ships. Now, this is the first time that we're seeing the uh, the kids that are friends with Isabella Moner. I think these are like orphan kids, I think. I don't know where I got that from, but I read it somewhere. And they're just walking around. And I really like this scene. I like that that th these kids exploring things. It reminds me of E.T., reminds me of Super 8, reminds me of Stranger Things. So I really like that aspect of the film so far. Here's Isabella Moner. We're seeing her for the fir very first time. I'm not sure what she's looking at, but in the next shot we get to see this the face of a new uh, Transformers character. Now, it doesn't look evil, so I'm not going to say that it's a Decepticon, and I definitely don't recognize it. Now, there are th um, three new Autobots that are being introduced. Um, I like to call them the English Autobot Trio because it consists of Hot Rod, McLaren, 570S, and also the Aston Martin uh, DB11. That's uh, the, uh, It's silver, the McLaren's red, and the Hot Rod is, of course, um, black and red. But this is none of those things. So what else is there? Uh, it's, of course, not any of the returning Autobots. And it, like I said before, it doesn't have a Decepticon face. I have a feeling that this is the face of the um, of the Junkion. I'm going to call him a Junkion. Uh, I'm thinking this could be the face of the Junkion. I mean... Uh, he, he looks really, really beat up uh, based on what we see. And I don't know what purpose he serves, but I'm thinking he does have some sort of information. Uh, this is a very unique looking uh, uh, face. It's it's very humanoid looking and it's unlike any we've seen before. It's got lips. And I think this is the Junkion. And I think that it looks, it looks like that he's going to die. He's going to either sacrifice himself or something. Okay, next shot is... Okay, here we go. Um, uh, this takes place underwater. I don't, I don't believe that this place takes place in space. If you take a closer look here, um, these look like submersibles and they're exploring the, uh, this, this cavern, this Cybertronian cavern, uh, underwater, deep, 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 deep into the sea. As we already know, they're filming with a, uh, the USS sub, I mean, uh, the HMS Alliance that's at Gosport in the, in London, uh, or in England rather. And... A part of the film requ uh, involves um, the deep diving of a submarine. So it's going down somewhere. And I'm thinking that wherever it's going is where the submersibles are also going. Because there's something down in the ocean that is of Cybertronian origin. Now it shows here that Optimus Prime is floating around in space. Optimus Prime is gone as, as, uh, as narrated by Anthony Hopkins. He knows something. His character knows something. He knows of Optimus Prime. He knows a lot about the Transformers. Now, this is very interesting because Optimus Prime appears to be dead. He's a goner. His spark is gone. And he's been, uh, I guess, um, uh, just floating in outer space because you see all this deterioration all over his, 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 uh, his body, his armor, and he's just floating around. And I'm thinking that there could be, like, one of two things going on. He either... Uh, did not make it to the creators because he didn't have enough energon. He should have took lockdown ship. Or he made it to the creators, but what happened next is this. The result of him meeting the creators ended up it, as this. And he's down there in deep, deep, deep space. I mean, this is like, like, what planet is that? I mean, this is, like, he's out there. Like, he's really, really out there. Now, this is interesting. This is a... A lot of people, I've been reading the comments, a lot of people are saying, like, this is the horn of, of Unicron. I don't think so. This is like a Cybertronian thing, okay? I don't know what it is. It's a Cybertronian thing, of course. But it's out there in Africa, in, in a desert of somewhere in Africa. They were filming in Africa, after all. Uh, but I don't know. I can't, I just can't seem to put anything, about, uh, like, a theory on, on what this could be. 
Now, this is very, very interesting. First of all, Anthony Hopkins narrating this whole thing was such a nice touch to this trailer. It just made it feel so different. And it feels like his character really knows something. Now, there are a lot of theories going on about this character. Uh, could he be Merlin? Could he be Winston Churchill? Uh, could he be a character that uh, is is uh, immortal? Uh, like, immortal. He's been living throughout, like, from medieval times to World War II to, to, uh, to modern day. And he has found the uh, Fountain of Youth or something like that. Uh, or some Cybertronian technology prevented him from aging, I don't know. But he seems to know a lot about uh, the Transformers through the um, the ages. So that is very, very interesting. That could be Excalibur right there. Obviously, this sort of place right in the center of uh, of this this shot, it's, it's, so, it's, it's significant. It's definitely significant. Now, this is very interesting. Uh, he says, no sacrifice, no victory. And over here, it says, Victoria seen something, something, something. It could be Latin. I don't know. But uh, he says, no sacrifice, vic no victory during the narration. And his, I mean, what he says there is actually the only, only connection to the Witwicky trilogy. Only connection. Other than that, this is a brand new story. But no sacrifice, no victory is the like basically the only reference that we know so far of what happened during the Witwicky trilogy. So uh, I find that very very interesting that they decided to do that. They decided to include that in. Uh, but the theme of no sacrifice, no victory is of course a very very deep one, and they have to they 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 will survive. They will win, but they need to give something up. And that's what the theme of No Sacrifice and No Victory is all about. And then we'll later on learn in the trailer that something terrible is going to happen. Okay, moving on. Let's take a look at this shot. Now, here's Elizabeth and Moner um, uh, with Squeaks. Uh, she's uh, very, very dirty, so she's been in some battle. Uh, here's Mark Wahlberg, and um, I believe he's on the run. He's on the run. Uh, and there's TRF uh, about to interrogate him. Uh, he, he's he's like taken prisoner. There's a close-up of him. A really nice shot there. And now this is very interesting. This looks like the moon. And then to this right side is something very, very um, threatening. <laughs> Obviously, in every film, there's always something threatening coming from outer space. <laughs> Well, now there's there's this thing, whatever the heck it is. A lot of people said, that, oh, it's uh, Unicron because it's a planet-sized thing. Or it's Cybertron because, after all, uh, maybe uh, Optimus Prime did make it to Cybertron and he saved it somehow. And maybe uh, to save it, he had to bring it back to Earth uh, or something. I don't know. But notice that, let's say this is Cybertron. Um, it's all apart. Like, it's all busted up. It's all broken. And that might have to do with Dark of the Moon. After all, remember all these hexagonal shapes? Uh, you see all these hexagonal shapes? These hexagonal shapes were actually um, seen on the Cybertron scene uh, in Transformers Dark of the Moon. The beginning of the movie in the Cybertron flashback and also in Dark of the Moon when they bring Cybertron to Earth, Earth's atmosphere, you saw all these hexagonal shapes. So that's a dead giveaway that this could potentially be Cybertron. But for some reason, it's like been... a terraformed um like it's got like it looks organic and it's like apart somehow and it's making its way actually towards at earth's atmosphere because like i believe that is the moon and it's going to uh get in the way of the moon maybe collide like look at that it's getting closer and closer and closer to the moon so that's really crazy looking and it looks like cyber it's uh, cybertron is on its way to earth that's my theory but then look at this here it is look look they are standing right here. I don't know what they're standing on, but there's Josh Duhamel, Mark Wahlberg, Laura Haddock, and also to the right is uh, 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 Santiago, something Santiago. Uh, I forgot, something Santiago. <laughs> but anyways, it looks like Cybertron, if that really is Cybertron, has been terraformed uh, and, and it's got like organic life to it. And it seems to be piecing itself together. And this is the most one of the most curious shots in the entire trailer itself. You know, aside from all the action, this is something that is very, very significant. And, uh, wow. Laura Haddock's character. You can see a lot of water splashing around. This is during the scene where they're uh, on, um, I guess, HMS Alliance. Either before they get 
onto the HMS Alliance or after it. Now here's Isabella Moner. She's running. To, I guess she works in a junkyard or something. I don't know. But there's a part of let's call it Cybertron uh, on his way to uh, to to Earth's atmosphere, and I guess she's trying to take a closer look. Um, now this is very interesting. This one caught me by surprise because this looks like a human-made mech. This looks like a a tank on uh, a tank with legs. That's essentially what it is. Bumblebee busts out of the wall. I believe this is the Packard plant in Detroit. The old Packard plant is a very rundown uh, industrial area. He busts out of the wall and then he attacks the the um, this mobile this uh, walking tank. And then once the turret turns, you notice that you see the upside down V, that's a TRF vehicle, which shows you that the TRF uh, forces are actually up against Autobots. Like they want to kill Autobots. Maybe they want to kill all Transformers. Uh, we'll find out the later on. But the fact is that uh, the TRF forces are actually threatening. After all, they did... Um, um, uh, hold uh, um, Mark Wahlberg. They're, they're chasing after Mark Wahlberg's character, right? Uh, now this is a very cool shot. It's a close up of the fight. Um, of, so TRF has their own little robots, and so it's going up against uh, uh, a Bumblebee. So they're, they built robots to go up against other Transformers. After all, I guess their soldiers don't seem to be making the cut. <laughs> but the the shot that follows afterwards is a little bit Michael Bayish because. I mean, sure, Bumblebee blasts it, it explodes, but the explosions actually come from the ground and like, like it just overkill explosion. Uh, the thing, you know, I expect the turret to explode. I don't expect the ground to just blow up. You see an explosion go off on the left side of its feet and the right side of its feet, typical Michael Bay fashion. <laughs> Isabella Moner uh, crying. She's saying that I want to stay and fight. And I love that about her character. Like she's a strong character. She's determined. And she's not just some damsel in distress. Finally, she's not just some girl that's just running away from danger, getting captured like Tessa and Megan Fox and Carly. You know what I'm saying? Uh, she's actually a tough chick. All right. So I love that about her character so far. Uh, Mark Wahlberg here, King Jaeger, looks like a Cybertronian weapon because that is huge. Look at that gun. I mean, it's just huge this, the barrel is monstrous he fires it later on now this is a great shot i guess during the way of like age of extinction he managed to uh salvage up some uh some uh, uh i guess cybertronian weapons and or make his own but anyways you can see him carrying a cybertronian weapon because like it looks like it's all silver here uh isabella moner is standing right there mesmerized by the explosions kind of stunned by what's about to happen after all she's young inexperienced and she doesn't know what to do uh, when she sees all these things, all these Decepticons out there, Mark Wahlberg is about to save her. Explosions going off, but what I see right here is so far is one, two, three Decepticons. And then once you once you continue the, with the scene, Mark Wahlberg actually uh, uh, uncovers another fourth Decepticon. And, there's, and then it just explodes. This whole area just explodes. I can't really make out which Decepticons these are, but I'm sure at least one of them are the Decepticons that we've seen uh, in vehicle mode, for example. One of them could be Onslaught, one of them could be the Confederate 61 bike, one of them could be uh, the Volkswagen uh, van, oh, and one of them could be Barricade, but I don't really see Barricade over there. But I do, however, I, I think I see Megatron. Like, those rounded shapes are really recognizable. You can even see the 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 the, the waist guard, the crotch guard, um, right before it explodes over there. So I believe it could be Megatron, but it's, it's, it's really, really um, from the distance. So I I can't really really tell but something tells me one of them's Megatron and the other ones could be the other Decepticons and I'm not sure why they're it, like they're blowing up there uh, it almost looks like one of them is tackling Megatron I can't really tell but that looks like it's gonna be a great scene uh, now here's a shot of Megatron and um, what's curious is that uh, it looks like he's walking into a uh, like the aftermath of a battle because you see some wreckage here uh, it, there's some fire going off the smoke has obviously been going on for a while so it's all smoky the 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 flames of the the fire the explosions has already been like 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 um like airing out so all you see is really uh, a uh, uh, like a fog of war like a like the like the smoke you see this turret here i think it's a turret uh, and it no, but it's not in use. So it really looks like Megatron is really just walking into the aftermath of a battle. So that's really curious to know that he wasn't part of the battle, but he is kind of his own character. Like it doesn't seem like he's part of the other Decepticons. He's his own thing. And considering that he looks like 
a medieval kind of barbarian type of character, I have a feeling that he's been kind of making his way through the, 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 the ages of time. Uh, here's Mark Wahlberg running through explosions. He's wearing his flight gear. Uh, Josh Duhamel in IMAX. I think he says uh, something that is very, very common, and that is, it's over. He says the whole thing is over. And that's something we've heard before. Tyrese said it in Dark of the Moon. Uh, I forget who else said it. Uh, Mark Wahlberg says something like, uh, no, it's not over yet, or I forgot. But I love knowing that these characters uh, 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 the events brought these two characters together. Mark Wahlberg got introduced in Age of Extinction. He had nothing to do with the first three films and now Josh Duhamel is meeting them. It's kind of like a reunion of sorts, but I love that. I love that uh, Michael Bay is really bringing the, all the key characters together. Here's a scene where Mark Wahlberg is sliding down, I guess what could be the Cybertronian, like the surface of a Cybertronian ship going into water. He's about to, I don't know, he's, he's uh, I guess he might drown I guess from the current, but then uh, Josh Duhamel's character uh, uh, saves him, he grabs him, and I guess they have a sort of relationship after they learn that they're both on the same side. Now this is a beautiful scene. Now we finally see a car chase. You cannot have a Michael Bay trailer without a car chase. A very, very brief moment, but this is one of the very one of the few scenes uh, in the trailer that actually takes place in London. Now we actually saw the behind the scenes of this hot rod racing through that uh, that that strip, the the the, the Pall Mall, right? And then if you look closely on the sidelines, those are not extras. Those are bystanders who are just fans who just happen to know that it was filming and they're just watching over here. You can't get rid of the fans. This is an open area and you know, you can't avoid it. So um, I think a lot of the fans in England or London are going to be able to say, hey, I was right there. So that's pretty cool. And what I love about this scene is just it's shot in such a with a low camera, a low angle camera. And it really just really shows you the speed at which they're traveling. So that's going to be a really great scene. Now, this is one of the shots that blew me away. Um, l look at, that's Megatron right there. You recognize him right away uh, because in the, this shot right here, you see the weapon that, um, that was used in the, the, uh, the, the official CG um, image of Megatron. So that's Megatron right there, and he seems to be threatening, uh, I don't know, based on the head shape of the profile, Josh Duhamel? It looks like it could be Josh Duhamel. Are they negotiating something? Josh Duhamel maybe wants to talk peace. Uh, Megatron uh, is a kind of like a lone wolf warrior from what I can tell. So uh, maybe he needs to talk to Megatron um, because they need his help because of what happens later on. Maybe there's a common threat that they have to deal with. We'll find out later on in the trailer to, uh, to back up my theory. But uh, it looks like Josh Duhamel is talking with Megatron and, and considering Megatron didn't actually slice him in half it looks like there will be a conversation made. And, you know, if the conversation was just uh, ended up being, um, or uh, the negotiation ended up being like, um, uh, like uh, a like negative result, then why have this scene to begin with? So I think that whatever happens here, actually Megatron ends up agreeing with, all right? Uh, Mark Wahlberg just moving in slow motion with water, typical Michael Bay fashion, explosions going off in uh, from TR, uh, TRF uh, characters, soldiers. Um, looks like the Detroit Packard plant. It's going to be a big action sequence there. Now, this is interesting. We saw this. Uh, we saw really clear photos of this scene. This is the London chase between Bumblebee and Barricade. And Mark Wahlberg is hanging off his seat. Now, remember when we saw it, it was a convertible of Bumblebee. And it wasn't actually the like the, like the original Bumblebee uh, a vehicle. It was a modified version of the Camaro um, that was used specifically for shooting that scene. And I actually said that this scene was actually used to shoot an interior scene. And it is just as I uh, just as I predicted. It's a scene for an interior uh, shot action sequence, and what they've included is basically a chase sequence, which involves Mark Wahlberg. Probably Bumblebee told Mark Wahlberg to hang out, or he he opened his door, and then the seat Bumblebee uh, kind of uh, moved the seat sideways so that he can make room for his arm, which is of course CG, which ends up shooting Barricade. And this could be the uh, Barricade's final demise. After all, once he shoots the gun or his cannon, his arm cannon, uh, the police car, Barricade's police car ends up going off, like like just flipping. So that could be 
Barricade's final moment, but <laughs> who knows. Uh, here's a shot of Optimus Prime. He's functioning now. He's got blue eyes, and it seems like he just woke up from space, or this is like like his final moments before he actually becomes like floating aimlessly in space. So um, he the key thing is that he's got his blue eyes, and then he's all battered up. Laura Haddock, and she goes, oh my god. And then um, the next scene you see is a very huge surprise, Bumblebee. Um, uh, going at, running at Optimus Prime, uh, what, a, on what appears to be a Cybertronian, the surface of a Cybertronian ship or a structure, and then, uh, 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 Optimus Prime just, just clothesline him and takes him right to the ground. Like, this is one hell of a takedown. <laughs> this is crazy. Um, this is, like, br full brutal takedown. Wow, it's a very, very violent move, uh, but one thing you do notice is that Optimus Prime's eyes go purple, and which shows that he's an evil version of Prime, which was teased with the, um, with the, uh, uh, the very first image of Optimus Prime's face in tra for Transformers last night. Michael Bay uh, posted that photo of, uh, of Optimus Prime's face uh, along with the title Transforms Last Night and then you see he's got purple eyes and that really really meant something obviously the fans noticed right away and of course they all predicted that this could be an evil version of Optimus Prime uh, uh, potentially Nemesis Prime I'm gonna call him Nemesis Prime uh, or Evil Optimus whatever you want to call it but uh, I have a feeling that in order to save Cybertron he had to give something up no sacrifice no victory Cybertron I'm thinking like we couldn't possibly see the end of Cybertron. We have to see more Cybertron. And maybe to save Cybertron, which is after all one of uh, uh, Optimus Prime's mission, he had to make a deal with the creators. And by making a deal with the creators, uh, they were able to maybe control him and make him evil. And so Bumblebee is the only one that can stop him uh, because, well, he's second in command. He's like the second leader. And... Uh, I guess he's he's the only one who would really go up against Prime. And then he goes, forgive me. And like, Prime has no control anymore. He has no control of himself. This is a really shocking scene. I couldn't believe it when I saw it. I didn't know they were going to come to this. I mean, we got a hint of it, but nothing can prepare you for actually witnessing it. And I just witnessed it along with a lot of you guys. And I could not believe my eyes. Like, I just couldn't believe it. What follows next is even crazier. Uh, uh, Optimus, with his purple eyes, he reaches out into the air, a blade comes right out. It comes right out, and then Mark Wahlberg, we're like, no! And Bumblebee, and with his eyes, like his eyes are looking in shock and terror, Mark Wahlberg is screaming for his life, and then um, Optimus Prime just stabs, stabs in the direction. We don't know what happened, but it suggests that Optimus did stab Bumblebee. Uh, what happens next, we'll have to find out in when we watch the film. But it's a very, very shocking scene. And I, I couldn't believe my eyes. What a trailer. Wow. I mean, what a freaking amazing trailer. I really love what I see. I, I say this all the time. This is one of the bit, best trailers I've ever seen. But the thing I love about it is that it's not about hype. It's not about like like action, 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 action. It, if you don't already notice, there's actually a lot of human scenes. It's a really, really great narration from Anthony Hopkins, but it shows you the just right amount of robot scenes. It shows you key robot scenes that really get you intrigued, but it doesn't show too much, and I love that about it. You didn't get to see any Autobots. You didn't get to see any, uh, like, a whole lot of Decepticons. You didn't even get to see any Dinobots. It just showed you just the right amount. So I'm looking forward to the next one, which is coming out in Super Bowl. That's two months from now, and we're going to see something really, really crazy. After all, they only have 30 seconds. I have a feeling they're going to show, like, the Super Bowl trailer, and then an extended version of that Super Bowl trailer, just like they did with Revenge of the Fallen. But anyways, that's all I got to say with this trailer analysis. It is crazy. Like, it is one hell of a trailer, and I'm just going to watch it again and again and again and again. I want to thank you guys all for watching this long trailer analysis, and uh, that's all I really got to say. What do you guys think about what I said? Let me know in the comment section below if you want to add anything definitely let me know uh, about your theories on the comment section by the way i think it's a great time to let you guys know that i have a few more raging nation t-shirts left it's got this embroidered patch with the raging nation logo he's a robot samurai there's only a hundred of them and uh, uh these these um this this woven label at the bottom was hand sewn. Uh, it's 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 just a, a a great little unique piece that i had to add in there and um it's it's 
originally 27 uh, USD, $27 uh, American dollars, uh, plus shipping. Uh, but uh, it's Christmas time, and I'm going to put on a sale, $18. Um, and then the, um, if you want to add in a Rage and Nation badge, I'm doing a package with a t-shirt, a Rage and Nation VIP badge, which is individually numbered. Um, I'm, I sign it. I write a personal message to you. And I'm doing everything for $30 plus shipping. A t-shirt, which was originally $27, but I'm making it $18 plus the Rage and Nation badge. $30 plus shipping. If it's within North America, it's only $7 for shipping. Unfortunately, I only have one medium left and a whole bunch of extra larges and a couple of extra, extra, extra larges. But I'm, I'm clearing them out for the new year. So uh, take advantage of this great deal. And if you purchase one uh, by by uh, by Wednesday or Thursday, I should be able to get it to you by Christmas time. Um, as for international shipping, it'll be a little bit more, uh, but uh, there are links on the, on the description box below. The, uh, the, sh the, the package is for, um, like the link will be for the package, okay? For the package with the shirt and the um, and the uh, and, and the the badge. Uh, once again, I only have one medium left and a bunch of extra larges, a couple of extra extra larges, out of smalls, out of larges. But I appreciate everybody that supported me. If you just want a badge, it's uh, it's uh, twelve dollars free shipping, free shipping, and once again, it it gives you access to. Uh, prize giveaways. Anyways, that's all I got to say in this episode. Thanks so much for all your support and watching. Once again, like I said before, there are a lot of lots and lots of new videos to, about Transformers last night. So make sure you stay subscribed. There's a lot to watch. And there you have it. Uh, stay tuned for my next episode. We're going to talk a lot more about Transformers last night. There are great, really hot topics. There are some really hot topics we got to discuss. I learned a lot of new stuff regarding the story, the characters, the robots, the Dinobots. So stay tuned for that episode. And as always, if you enjoyed this episode, you want to see more, hit the like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like me on Facebook, The Rage Nation. Also follow me on Twitter, Rage Nation. My name is Alexi. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.